Hello everyone, now I will show you how to set up your Netgear router, RS500. And before starting, if this video helps, please support me. I donate half of all donations to shelters. You can find more details in the description below. So the first thing that you will need to do is to turn on your router. Take the power adapter. Plug one end of the power adapter into an outlet and the other into the router. Then press the power button. When the router is turned on, the power indicator will be lit. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Next, plug the cable from your internet service provider or from your modem into a special internet port. This port is usually labeled as internet and usually it has a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it snaps into place. Now you need to restore the router to its factory settings. Hold down the reset button on the router for 10 seconds. Wait until the indicator lights on the router start flashing. At times, this button is found inside the router casing to prevent it from being pressed by mistake. In this case, use a slim object to press it down. The router will restart and the settings will go back to their original factory defaults. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable provided with the router into one of the LAN ports. And plug the other end of the cable into your computer's Ethernet port. Wait a few minutes for connection. Great, we've connected the router to your computer. Now you will need to set it up. But first, let me show you another way to connect the router if you do not have an ethernet cable or your computer does not have an ethernet port. Connect the router to the power adapter and cable from your internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If your router is new and hasn't been set up, your Wi-Fi network will be named after the router. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password printed on a sticker. Connect to it. Awesome, you've connected to the router. Now let's get it set up. First, open your browser and go to the URL that you see on the screen. Use the address bar instead of the search bar. Then click here. Read Netgear terms and conditions and click I agree button. And click next. Click next again. If, if your router settings do not look like mine, it means that your router has a different firmware. I made a video for every firmware type. You can find all the links in the description down below. The first thing you need to do is set up a new password. The admin password is used to log in to your router's web interface. Pay attention to the password requirements. Write your new password in the first field and duplicate it in the second field. Then select two security questions and write answers for them. You need them just in case you need to reset the admin password in the future. On this page, you can customize your network name and password. Click Next. If your browser does not redirect after two minutes, reload the page. On the next page, you will find the information you need to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you were connected using the preset Wi-Fi credentials, it's time to connect using the new Wi-Fi credential. If you want, you can print them out. Click Next. 
If the router has not been updated for a long time, the next page may automatically start the firmware update process. If the new firmware is not available, click Next. After updating the firmware, you may be redirected to the Netgear website where you can register your router. If you want to, you can do it. I'm just going to close this window because I'm not going to do that. Log into the router's web interface again if you were logged out of it. Enter the standard username, admin, and password that you created a few minutes ago. Press sign in button. Close this window. In the top right corner, you can change the language of the router's website interface. To get the internet, go to Advanced. Set up Wizard. Press No, I want to configure the router myself. Then press Next button. On the following page, select Internet Settings. In most cases, there are two options. Connection with and without a login. Almost always, your internet connection will not require a login. You can find all of this information in the contract you have with your internet service provider. If your internet connection does not require you to log in, or if you do not know whether logging in is required or not, select No. Leave account name and domain name unchanged. Then in Internet IP Address section, choose Get Dynamically from ISP. In the DNS section, select Get Automatically from ISP as well. You will need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer if your ISP only allows Internet access to a specific MAC address. Select Use Default MAC Address. If you are not sure about these settings, Check again that your settings are the same as mine. And click Apply. In most cases, it is not necessary to clone the MAC address. But if you can't get the internet connection after quick setup, later, in the video, I will show you how to clone MAC address. Now you need to reboot the router. To do this, go to the router's web interface if you were logged out of it. Go to Advanced, Advanced Home, click on the Reboot button, and click Yes. After restarting, wait a few minutes and try Googling something. If it doesn't work, check all the cables. They must be connected properly. Then log into the Router Control Panel again. Go to Basic, Internet, and choose Use Computer MAC Address. Click Apply button. And then, Reboot Router again. Go to Advanced, Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button and click Yes. After the reboot, wait a couple of minutes and try to Google something again. That's all. If you found my video helpful, please support my work. Half of all donations I send to animal shelters. All details are in the description down below.